The F1 silly season ahead of 2024 was, well, non-existent. Every single team that hated drivers up for renewal just went for the safe and boring route of re-signing them. Meaning that we're set, we were set to have the Sam grade lineup for this year as it was at the end of 2023, and meaning there will be no rookies on the grid this year. Well, until Carlos Sainz's appendix decided to get involved in matters, that is. It was only one race Behrman has been in, but at least we can say that there has been a rookie on the grid this year. But we're more or less guaranteed rookies in 2025. But who? Well, here is four who I think deserve a shot. Let's get the obvious one out of the way first, why don't we? Oliver Behrman. The young Brit is, I think, almost certain to be on the 2025 grid, most likely with Haas, but with the Ferrari connections and all, and now especially after his amazing performance at the last race in Saudi Arabia, standing in the last minute, almost making it into Q3 and qualifying and then in the race, moving forward to take points on debut with a P7 finish. Yes, he was in the second quickest car. But it was still a great performance. Uh, frankly, I think he was a shoe in for a 2025 Haas seat anyway, because the American outfit seemed pretty impressed with him already after his FP1 outings with them last year. And not to mention, looking at his junior racing career, it is pretty damn impressive. Champion in Italian and ADAC F4 in 2021 with 6 wins in ADAC and 11 wins in Italian, with 7 of those being in a row, by the way, and a handful of other podiums as well in each of those two series. He was third in Formula 3 in 20. 22 with one win and a handful of additional podiums and he finished sixth in last year's Formula 2 championship with five wins and one more additional podium and those five wins including a double win in Baku after topping FP1 and taking pole position a, a pole he got with wonky steering if you recall the start to his 2024 F2 campaign has been slow having a weekend to forget in Bahrain and then withdrawing in Saudi in order to drive F1 though it is worth noting he had taken pole in F2 prior to signs of the pendings getting involved. In all, if this man is not on the 2025 grid, I will quite frankly be shocked. When it comes to what should be on the grid that currently is not on the grid, Liam Lawson is a name that will continually come up, it's come up before on this channel, and it is coming up here again. Because this man should be on the grid, and honestly he proved that last year when he stood in for Daniel Ricciardo. And I'd like to mention Singapore specifically, making Q3 and going on to score points and this being at one of F1's more challenging tracks. And not to mention the driver he knocked out to make it into Q3 was none other than Red Bull driver Max Verstappen. In terms of a junior racing record, well, I would say pretty successful. Second in Australian F4 with five wins and several additional podiums in 2017. Second in ADAC F4 with three wins and several additional podiums in 2018. In 2019, he was the champion in Toyota Racing Series with five wins and a handful of additional podiums. And he finished second in the Euro Formula Open Championship with four wins and three more podium finishes. He also did his first season of F3 that year, but he finished 11th in the championship there. In 2020, he had another goal at the Toyota Racing Series, where he finished in the runner-up spot this time, with five wins and a handful of additional podiums to his name, and he also stuck with the Formula 3 Championship, where he ended a fifth in the standings, with three wins and three additional podiums to his name. In 2021, he won on his Formula 2 debut, and this was also the year in which he raced in DTM, and he also won on his debut there, and he damn near won the entire championship, but he ended second of course after a bit of a controversial final race I would say. And in his second season of F2 in 2022, he ended the year third with four wins to his name and a handful of additional podiums. He took the Super Formula last year in 2023 and he ended the year second in the standings with three wins, race wins to his name and one of those being on his debut. Well, I suppose this is all just a long way to say, Red Bull family, get this man on the grid in 2020. 25 before you lose him. Because I, I swear to God, if the Red Bull family do not get Liam Lawson on the grid in 2025, they really do risk losing him, I think. Teo Porcher is currently taking the Liam Lawson route to things and is headed over to spend a year racing around Japan in Super Formula. The first race was nothing to really write him about, was finishing 18th, but that's where he is now. But he could surely find himself being a candidate for an F1 seat in 2025. And looking at his junior racing record, it is once again a pretty strong 
long one with third in French Formula 4 in 2018 with one win and a few more podiums beyond that and he was the champion in, in ADAC F4 in 2019 taking four race wins and several more podium finishes across the season on his way to the championship. In 2020 he found himself in Formula 3 finishing second in the championship just points off of champion Piastri with two wins earlier in the season and a string of podiums towards the end of the season to put up a late challenge for the title. He spent the next few years in Formula 2 where across his three seasons he'd claimed six race wins and several more podium finishes with two of those wins being in 2021 the one of which being Monaco which well enough said there three of the wins came in 2022 when he'd finished second in the championship and then he had just one race win in 2023 but he had several more podium finishes in addition to that to aid him in going on to become the 2023 Formula 2 champion and for the third time in a row the person who won the Formula 2 championship did not get an F1 seat immediately the next season but I cannot tell but feel like Sauber are going to make some changes in their driver lineup for 2025 and I cannot feel but poor chair who is the team's reserve driver will be a candidate for one of the seats or well I think he should be at the very least and finally Andrea Kimi Antonelli is kind of an unavoidable name when it comes to speaking about junior driver prospects for F1 at the moment and quite frankly he's also a prospect that I continue to forget that his name is actually Andrea and not Kimi but there is a small caveat for him here and that's that he should be on the 2025 F1 grid providing he does a good enough job in F2 this year which I'm sure he will do a good enough job but just to mention. But his single-seater junior career so far has been really impressive. Like Behrman did in 2021, then in 2022 Antonelli won both Italian and ADAC F4 and he basically dominated both of those seasons with 13 wins, six of those in a row by the way, and two more podium finishes beyond that in the Italian championship and nine wins across his ADAC F4 winning season. He also won the FIA Motorsport Games Formula 4 Cup in 2022 and quite frankly I had never heard of that prior to making this video. But last year in 2023, the young Italian found himself ch as champion in both Formula Regional Middle East and Formula Regional European, with three race wins and a few more podiums beyond that in the Middle East Championship, and five race wins and a few more podiums beyond that in the European Championship. And this season he's in Formula 2 with Prema. And while he scored nothing in race 1, he finished in the points in races 2, 3 and 4, with a 10th place finish in the Bahrain feature race and P6 in both races in Saudi Arabia. Now history has shown that the Prema is a very good team to find yourself driving for in Formula 2 or well any junior Formula series but we're talking about F2 here and that's gonna bode well for Antonelli in his bid to make it to F1 and if he can do a good enough job in Formula 2 this year he could very well find himself sitting in my bets are on a Williams Formula 1 car next year. I quite frankly do not see Mercedes going for a rookie to replace Hamilton so my bets are on a Williams seat for him and okay I said four but Bonus mention here, finally, I do want to give a quick shout the way of Zane Maloney, the boy from Barbados. And you know, if I'm not mistaken, if he does get to the F1 grid, then he'd be the first Formula 1 driver from Barbados. But like Porcher, he's part of the Sauber Academy. So if for 2025, Sauber are looking to replace a driver and decide to bring in someone from their academy and they don't fancy Porcher for whatever reasons, Maloney could be a good shout, providing he can keep up his early season momentum in F2 this year, because he has had a very strong strong start to the season. He's currently leading the championship, having taken a double win in Bahrain, and he is, I believe, the first driver to win both races of the opening race weekend ever in F2 or GP2. And while qualifying in Saudi Arabia was really nothing spectacular, he qualified 16th, I believe it was. He made up a lot of point of places in both races to score points in both races. And if he keeps that up, he could fin himself in for a shout at a seat. Who do you think deserves a shot to be on the Formula 1 grid in 2025? And on a similar note, who on the current F1 grid do you think is at risk of not being on the grid in 2025? Let me count your thoughts, do it in the comments below, drop a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.